before I started off farming with, with a old white fella working crop on half and flying mules. And the old white man, the old mule was such a plug, he used to make a wild whoop and tell us, catch him up, make him go. We used to plow and farm by light. Go to the field by light and yeah, stay in the field till so they get night just about. This thing, that's a mold boat. And the other thing at the point, that's the point of the thing for do the cutting the brown. One, the point cuts it, and the mold boat turns it to make the road. We had to put, put in, start at six and stop at 12 for, for one hour and go back at one and work till six again. That's the kind of hour we had to work with that plow. Sometimes, if your mule ain't too good, you had to stop for in because he, you give out. <laughs> and you give out, he just won't pull no more. Had to take him out and go feed him. That's you walk behind that all day, you'll be tired when night comes. You'll rest. Do you know Mr. Allen? Oh, yeah, that's my brother-in-law. Mr. Allen's your brother-in-law? That's right, man, my sister. Did you used to work with him? No, we used to work side and side. I used to work this farm over here, across the road here. I was renting that farm. And he bought this farm over here, and this first time I had a chance to help him. In the hay field, and he ain't farming no cotton. Mm -hmm. He's just farming corn and raising cattle. Mr. Fred Allen. He is on Social Security and farms out of habit, even though the glory years of agriculture in his area are over. Farming for him is a lifestyle, not a job. He can remember the good times and the bad, the era that has passed in Southern agriculture. Made a dub out of it, didn't he? You'll get messed up raking that stuff if you don't watch yourself. I wouldn't recommend uh, farming to the young people now because I don't believe they would uh, have interest in farming. It's too slow for them. All right, he's on. You got, uh, got a man Farming, in the you know, you don't get the money. If you get in it at all, you don't get it but once a year, and that in the fall. And these young folks now, they want their money every two weeks or every week. Tell us about, you said you were farming before? Well, yeah, I farm up high as about 200 acres. Uh-huh. And uh, cotton and corn and vegetables and stuff like that. Well, I'm going to have to cook you some water. I'll be back. Label got com complicated, and that cut us all down, look like. I was renting the most of the land that I was farming, including my, including my own. And still, I done good at it till about three years ago, and I retired. Is that because of labor? Cost of labor? Labor shortage was the most of it. And, uh, and uh, the labor left and went off and got scattered, and it wasn't enough folk, wasn't enough folk to operate it. And that cut it short. And I retired. I was old enough to retire. Then I retired, got on Social Security. 
So the small farmers pretty well got cut out about three or four years ago. Yeah, about three or four years ago, a lot of them got cut out. So all the equipment and stuff like that out. Well, how do you feel about that, especially thinking about younger people wanting to get in farming? What's that, how does that make you feel? Oh, I feel like there's going to be a few of them. Not going to be a whole lot of them like it used to be. Because the equipment is so high, you can't uh, make your payment. That's what makes it complicated. And if you own that own farm, it costs so much, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a whole lot to get set up in it. Well, I'm just putting a fence up around this place here I just bought. Uh, I just purchased a couple of weeks ago. And uh, trying to get it fenced up by fall of the year so I can get some cattle in here. It's not the matter of me I have to plow that mule, but the exercise I get up behind that mule, and I feel good plowing that mule. Part of the old farming experience was a relationship between man and the land, between man and the animals. The thing was tough then, you know. I didn't have much advancing, you know, to give me the time, and I just put that old tractor down on the shed and, and plowed the mule. And I made about 20 bales of cotton. Tell us what happened just now. Oh, uh, what happened to him? Uh, he got that blank. I think his one eye, eyesight is going bad, uh -huh. and he couldn't see good. He's got that bag down there, and uh, he let to survive down in there, down in there. He's just old. How long have you had this mule? I had this mule. Well, that's several years. He was old when I bought him. He's wart when I bought him, but. He, I've been getting pretty good, you know, results out of wake out of him. And uh, I just keep him now and trying to take care of him as best as I can. And what he eat, I just let him eat that. He can't eat nothing much but ground and feed. And, 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 and no grain in there. He's just old. Just something about older than I am, just about. And I know I've been here pretty good while. Oh, yeah. He looks like a nice but, but he lucky, he lucky. See that bag? He throws that bag, skills that bag. He lucky. <laughs> and so, oh yeah. And so, he lucky mule. See, I haven't been but a few years put this potato out. And uh, it's one of the best potatoes. On, this produce man said this is the best potato on the market. But a lot of people don't know about this potato. It's a, it's a nice potato and it has a good shape to it. And it gives you a good, a good eel too. It gives you a good eel. This dry weather here now. And if it make like this a dry weather, if you get the season, I don't know what it'll make. Now this is dry weather here now. Show sure, you. Yeah. You know. It's time I think to harvest them because they'll start to sprouting on the field on. They said wait till the frost come the big sweet potatoes, but if you wait till the frost, I'm, i maybe I'll run a little late. You know. And, and and it's sweet. It's a sweet. It's, 
It's about one of the best potatoes you can put in your mouth. How's that? Why do you do it if there's not that much money in it? Well, I mean, this year. Uh-huh. This a year, every year don't be a lot. Uh-huh. See, well, some years you're going to make it, and some years you, if you do come out even, you're lucky. Uh-huh. And there's some years when you, 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 you do pretty good. Take a year when the drive hits you, there ain't nothing you can do. But just take it easy and, and do the best thing you can and try to hope that another year will, will, will be, be a little better. But sometimes you find out you have two years yeah. together, then it hurts you. Two bad years? It'll hurt you. Two years together to hurt you. Okay. Take last year, mm -hmm. we had a bad drop last year, and this year the same way. Mm -hmm. Well, a small man like me, he, he ain't got too much to lose because I don't, I, my, she, my, my machines, don't, 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 I don't buy them high-priced machines. Mm -hmm. uh, you buy those high-priced machines, it takes money, and it takes a good crop, a year of crop to pay for them. The mines, I don't have, too, I don't have much expenses. I try to do it myself.